our last episode, we picked up some friends in Pender Harbor and sailed up to Skookum Chuck Narrows, the fastest tidal rapids in the world. Now we head to our northernmost destination, Princess Luisa Inlet. We're surrounded by waterfalls and experienced four months worth of rain in two days. We got drenched. Welcome to the beautiful Pacific Northwest. We're Ingrid and Jim, a couple seeking new adventures aboard our 37-foot sailboat, Indigo. Having sailed over 200 nautical miles north from Seattle, this morning, we set out on the final and most critical leg of our journey to Princess Luisa Inlet, acclaimed as one of the most beautiful anchorages in the world. So the depth through here ranges from about 1,700 feet to 2,000 feet. That's all. And this is likely why these cliffs just go straight down. miss the slack, then you're in trouble because there is no other place to dock. There's no other place to anchor. You have to get through the timing correctly. The thing is they don't call it Malibu Passage. They call it Malibu Rapids. And we were just at Skookumchuck Rapids. So I know what rapids look like. Before we can get to Malibu Rapids, we have to get past the helicopters. To log in steep, rocky terrain such as this, loggers climb, top, and remove the limbs of each tree and partially cut the stem. The helicopter cable then grapples the stem and pulls until the wood breaks at the partial cut. Logs are stored in the water before being loaded up on barges, as we saw days earlier. The helicopters fly only every few days when enough trees are readied for harvesting. In this case, a major storm is on the way, so they're trying to move as many prepared trees into the water as possible. It's extremely dangerous for the loggers and the pilot. Shortly after we passed by, the pilot of a logging helicopter was killed in a water crash here in Jervis Inlet. Approaching Malibu Rapids. Currents regularly run 10 to 12 knots through Malibu Rapids, so it's critical we time our arrival and transit at slack. However, there are no current tables to tell you when slack is at Malibu Rapids. The only way to estimate it is to add or subtract 45 to 55 minutes from tide tables at Point Atkinson, 60 miles away. Get the calculation wrong? and the current will be too strong for us to enter.
We made it. And? And we met the park ranger, Ming. Yeah. And we're all set up on the dock. There are three other boats on the dock. Get settled in and then go mm -hmm. explore tomorrow. We knew this megastorm was headed our way when we set out for Princess Louisa Inlet. What we were about to find out is what this much rain will do to our beautiful little anchorage. So we are surrounded by waterfalls. Uh, if you look up the hills, you see them everywhere. They're across this hillside over here and you go around to this side some big ones that are coming down if you look way up high over here coming down the, the rock faces of this boat is totally soaked. We have the full enclosure, but it's wet in here and everything that we have is wet. Hoping to see some sun breaks today, get a little bit of sunny weather, try to do a good hike up towards the top of the falls. We'll see what we can get in today. Looks like this is the end of the trail, at least for us. After this next rise, it ends in a river. Well, it's not normally a river, but it is right now. <laughs> In last night's storm, strong surface winds blew down the inlet just as the tide was receding, stranding and killing thousands of lion's mane and moon jellyfish. Ming told us this happens only every several years. The next tide will sink them deep into the inlet. It's 
day four of our time here in Princess Louisa Inlet and we are headed back. We have a schedule to keep in that at 11.43 we have slack at Malibu Rapids, so we have to be there. The only complication now is we have thunder and we have no internet so we can't see what the radar and weather actually looks like. We don't know where the thunder and light, we don't know where the lightning is. We don't know anything except that we heard thunder. So we're gonna have to make a decision. Do we go even though there's thunder and lightning out there or what do we do? We later found out the sound we heard was not thunder, but actually a rare, large rock fall. Another consequence of the severe weather. The news gave us the all clear to begin our passage south.